breakthrough in the field of education through the program of Merdeka Belajar Kampus Merdeka in order to develop students soft skills and hard skills so they are ready to face the challenges of the work field. The concept offered at this program is to give educational institution the right of autonomy from bureaucracy. Lecturers are freed from complicated bureaucracy and students are given the freedom to choose the fields they like. This program has been launched by the Ministry of Education, consisting of eight programs that give students the right to study outside the study program for three semesters, maximum equivalent to 60 credits. So the significance of this program is to improve the competence of graduates to be more prepared and relevant to the needs of the work field. As the best, as the foundation of this program is Permendikbud Rules Number no. Three of 2020 concerning higher education standards, Article 10. It is expected that from this program, students' soft skills such as leadership, problem solving, critical thinking, analytical skill, communication, collaboration, creativity, and innovative innovation can be developed. So the problem of this research is how is the implementation of the MBKM program in the language department? Uh, for the design of this study, I will do, I use qualitative design and the subject of this research are students from Indonesia, from three program, stu program studies. They are Indonesian language and literature education program, English language education program, and Arabic language education program. So they are there are 66 students who joined this program starting from 2020 till mid 20, 2022. So the program that they joined are humanitarian projects, campus mengajar, educational internships, program of village development and empowerment, and student exchange. And the last one is a research program. As you can see here that uh, there are three study programs and we, from eight programs uh, offered by the uh, Ministry of Education, so far we have implemented seven, seven, seven programs. And the finding of this research is first, the mode of participation causes the experience gained by students to vary. So as we know that the COVID hit uh, Indonesia since 2020, so for uh, student exchange, they cannot join uh, the program offline. So according to them, uh using using uh online uh mode they think that uh, the experience that they have they gain is not uh is not as they have expected they have expected and then uh in terms of orientation has has been given by study program however uh, students from some uh, students from some programs think that it will be easier if they they are given a pocketbook so they they can learn it easy easily and then uh, most of the students admitted that uh, they don't get facilities from from a campus uh they just uh, supported in terms of administrative and documents and then uh related with the credits that converted uh the the credits is various it depends on the uh the semester the level of students so if they are in the uh third or fourth semester uh, the study program 
will give a uh, 20, 20 SKS or 20 credits. Yeah. However, for students from a uh, higher batch, uh, for example, if they are the seven semester students or um, six semester students, uh, the study program find it is difficult to confer, convert uh, the program into 20 uh, credits. So, so the range of credits given varies from vary from 12 to 27. Um, related with the relevant of the knowledge that students have possessed uh, as the background to join this study, uh, each program has um, how how can I call it? have a different gradation of relevance. For example, for campus mengajar program, the English students are are positions in elementary school. And that way they do not teach English subject in in elementary school. So there are only um, courses such as uh, classroom management, um, psychology, student psychology, only some courses are open uh, for the students who join the campus. However, if they join a um, research program, there are a lot of uh, an uh, internship program. There are a lot of courses that are relevant to the to the program that they are taking. That they are taking. So, so based on uh, the interview, uh, like they from some item of the questions, the from the experience they they told us, they admit that the NBKM program train trains students soft skill, develops students soft skill. Uh, in this case, how they solve the problems, adapt with the environment, communicate and collaborate with stakeholders and um, friends in their groups, and also how, how they need to think critically and then the next I and the next point is about obstacles and uncomfortable uh, question situation they admit that they become more a discipline and not to give up easily when they are dealing with uh, uncomfortable situation in terms of student expectation during the uh, early program uh, most of them think that the program has implemented according to their expectation and however um, for programs such as campus mengajar some of them admit that they are placed uh, in at schools that are far away from their home and for research or and for students who join the research program they admit that the the duration or the period of joining the program is extended suppose in the early plan the program will be uh, conducted or held in uh, four months however it was extended till five months about the obstacles uh, 
students who join the students exchange and research program they admit that the use of local local language has become the barrier so they they did not easily uh interact with uh the people uh with their friends and then um uh, from students who join the campus mengajar program they admit that uh, the access of they have difficulty in terms of accessing the clean water and electricity and also the bad condition of the road and then for students who join the community serve service yeah village empowerment they admit that they have challenge in dealing with the uh, society with the with the local people there how to change their mindset and how to involve them in in their how to involve the society into their program uh, and for the internship program uh some students admit that they have difficulty uh when uh other members in their group did not perform or did not uh fulfill uh, their duties as a team as a member team so uh what i can conclude from this research is that the mbkm program in the language department has been uh, well implemented and uh, the output is relevant in terms of developing student soft skill which really uh, needed uh, for them in entering the work field okay i think that's all uh, my presentation i'm very sorry because i cannot join this conference uh directly because um i'm on my way I'm going to Jambi. okay thank you Thank you, Ibu Reli Handayani, for presenting through your video that you sent. So we are now coming to the Q&A session for... Sorry. Yes, please. The Q&A session will be delivered after all the presentation has been oh, done. All the presentation. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Ibu Okay, thank you for Ms. Rally for a precious presentation. And now let us move to the next presentation, which will be delivered by Tuxu Oyun Erdene, Nadine Satsek, Tulmun Storik, and Batard Sok. And I will be the moderator of this session. So this presentation will be delivered about the learning styles issues on student performance in the flip classroom. So, time is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me? Yes, good. Okay, thank you. Uh, good day to all the scholars and educators gathered here today. We are delighted to present here in the uh, conference, and our topic will be issues of learning styles on student performance in flipped classroom. And our presentation structure will be simple, uh, beginning with the introduction of flipped classroom and modern education. And in literature review, uh, we will see how researchers are storming about these new pedagogical methods and next, I will try to explain more about modern education system and its evolution. In the latter part, I will present our research findings and we will wrap it up with our conclusion and future recommendations from our study results. Uh, since the outbreak of COVID-19, I believe, 
sorry, I believe uh, most countries, as did Mongolia, have begun using digital methods in uh, their education system. And as I have mentioned earlier, educators and researchers are storming about all these new pedagogical met uh, and learning methods. One of them is flipped learning. Flipped learning breaks the norm of traditional learning. On the other hand, employers' demand for graduators with certain new skills are increasing. These skills mostly include soft skills, such as creativity, collaboration, and critical thinking. And we are soon to realize these skills can be obtained through a flipped learning uh, classroom. And in our re research work, we have aimed to identify our students' learning style and assign tasks depending on their learning style, providing them with dig digital materials used in the flip flipped classroom. Each and every student can be categorized into certain groups depending on their learning style. And we tried these, uh, try to relate these styles to their achievements in the flipped classroom. After a short while, we have assessed the tasks according to our criteria based on the four C's principles. And in this section, I will try to explain more about this new trend in the, in the education system, the flipped learning. Almost every student and uh, every instructor uh, prefer flipped learning than traditional learning nowadays. As we all know, traditional learning uh, was effective in its time, but why is flipped learning favored so much? Flipped learning offers students to improve their soft skills, which is one of the highest demands in modern employers. In other words, using flipped learning in classroom setting will increase active engagement and teachers will be able to devote class time to discussing topics and answering questions and practicing exercises. And not to mention, this allows the students to study simple information and accomplish basic tasks by themselves, which enables them to improve their creativity. And it also encourages them to use critical thinking, analysis, and collaboration. Having these 4C skills mastered will guarantee a very effective labor force in our society. And learning language is not similar to learning mathematical equations or physical theories. Language is usage. We can use it in our everyday life. We can learn it from our everyday life. That's why it's easier to learn language with the flipped learning classroom, uh, flipped learning method than learning other subjects. And in 1983, Kerry Lin defined that a learning style is a consistent mode of operation that reflects the underlying causes of behavior this refers to the general area of interest concerning individual differences in cognitive approach and learning process, which simply means that every student can have their own different learning styles. But of course, these can be generalized and grouped. And identifying that certain learning behavior and using this to provide a better outcome focused education is only possible in the flipped learning method, whereas the traditional method only covers the mass. We only use one pedagogical method on all the students in our classroom. And let's take a look at our literature review. As there are light and shadow, uh, flipped learning has its advantages, but also its disadvantages. And in 2014, scholars Bradford, Muntin, and Pathak reported the benefits of the method. And in 2050, Zagelmeyer and Topetz have mentioned about efficient time management in the class. As all students have their own learning speed, independent materials allow the students to spend their own necessary time to learn the subject. Then DeSantis, Van Curren, Putz, and Metzer have highlighted the students' participation and engagement. And we can also see some uh, other scholars have defined the method's quantitative confirmation as neutral, negative, and positive. And however, our research work is in terms of evaluating the impact of learning styles in relation with the four C's. As technology advances and in some areas of the world, development differences are increasing. There are new challenges to us in terms of education, but these can be overcome with four main skills, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. Having better of these skills will almost guarantee that the students will land in higher paying position, better lifestyle, and so on. In 2019, a scholar, Saleh, mentioned that numerous curriculum development plans and programs 
have been developed and implemented with the goal of integrating these skills. And in 2021, Cooper noted that all four of these items are required in the 21st century classroom. Our study revolves around our 41 sophomore students of Mandakh University. We have tried to use flipped learning at its best on these students and also tried to assess their task accomplishments with the 4C skills criteria. First, we determined the students' learning style with the VAK test. This is a visual, auditory, and kinesthetic test. Uh, this determines the learning styles of our students and helped us to provide the suitable material for our students in the online learning system. Depending on the results, we group, group the students into five groups. After teaming up the students with their classmates with similar learning styles, we provided them with digital materials within the framework of the Professional English 2 course. Then we gave them tasks which requires their 4C skills to be used for. Lastly, then we evaluated their task accomplishments to compare the results and relate them with their learning styles. These task scores and questionnaire results were then processed with qualitative method. Mm -hmm. We also had an interview with the students about their experience in the project. After the VAK test, we can see that most of the students has, uh, or the 58.5% of the students has kinesthetic or tactile learning style. And the next bigger group of students, 19.5 of them have visual learning style. Then we provided the students with digital materials such as video lesson with short text with instructor's explanation, listening, vocabulary, and comprehension exercises. In order to complete these tasks, this, uh, the teams were reminded to work as a team in the process of preparing and presentation on a given topic individually or, or as a group seeking and processing the information from other sources, improving target language knowledge and skills, and designing a presentation and delivering it. Here you can see how each student with different learning style behaves. For example, with kinesthetic learning style, students like to move around a lot. They like to participate in a lot of things. They don't prefer to read and sit still. They also enjoy problem solving. Students with visual learning style they like to look at things such as the chalkboard or the blackboards. They write things down. They copy on what's on the board. They create mind maps to summarize. They like to watch videos. But auditory learning style students, they like to talk a lot. They talk with themselves. They talk with their classmates. They enjoy discussions and conversations. And as, as an ESP student uh, educators, we must remember that each student has their own preferred learning methods. This must be considered when we provide them with digital materials or when we assess their task accomplishments as well. And on the scheduled day five, uh, on the scheduled day, five teams presented their presentation and scored one to five according to the criteria after two weeks of studying individually in groups according to their own learning styles. And in addition, the results of the VAK test, which was used to test information retrieval and process, processing attitudes of students in each of the three different learning styles, confirmed that their learning patterns were similar. For example, the following results were obtained from the list of actions to be taken when learning something. The table compares the selected actions from the list with the most frequency. In table three, you can see how the V1 group received the highest scores for their creativity, A1 group for their collaboration, and the K123 groups for their creativity and collaboration skills. Interestingly, critical thinking was rated significantly, significantly lower in all five groups. This research was qualitative research that aimed to find out how these 41 participants inserted the value of 4C skills in learning ESP in accounting and interviewed and observed to obtain data before being discussed in the study. From the finding, findings, we can see that lecturers enter 4C values in various ways. First, students understand the importance of critical thinking by employing problem-based learning methods in which the lecturer presents various scenarios for students to solve. Lecturers employ project-based learning to teach creative thinking abilities 
which requires students to provide creative ideas during the project completion process. And students develop cooperation abilities by completing group or pair assignments that required them to work together on the tasks. And finally, students emphasize the importance of communications uh, in practically every meeting, from discussions in classroom forums to major role-playing tasks. The direct relationship between supportive and uh, in, supportive and inhibiting factors in the implementation of the 4C skills was not investigated in the study. However, in order to elaborate further, uh, the students, students submitted information relevant to the criteria thought to be important. The findings of the study revealed three characteristics that encourage students to participate in the classroom implementation of the 4C abilities. Mutual support among students, teachers' assistance to the students, and teachers' understanding of the 4C skills concept were the variables. Those three variables, according to the students, consider considerably boosted the execution of the 4C skills in the flipped classroom. And this paper reports uh, our efforts to empirically validate the effect of flipped classroom on the student performance and to investigate if students preferred learning style impact uh, performance and flipped pedagogy. We conducted an experiment with a total of 41 students, seven of them with visual learning style, eight of them with auditory learning style, and most or 24 of them with kinesthetic learning style the experiment, uh, in the experiment group. Although correlations between learning style and type of assessment were statistically significant in some cases, they generally appeared to be weak and in most assessments, there was no correlation. Therefore, the conclusion of this study that overall academic performance is not influenced by learning style. Furthermore, the findings show that communication is linked to teamwork. Students' ability to interact can be boosted as much as feasible by allowing them to communicate both online and in person. Furthermore, critical thinking is linked to creativity since many activities involving critical thinking necessitate imagination in order to achieve the lesson's objectives. This is due to the type of learning activities that the lecturer uses and designs. Finally, the data revealed that students demonstrated their four C's in both online and offline sessions, beginning with creativity, cooperation, critical thinking, and communication. The flipped classroom should be used in pre-service teachers' higher education since it is a very advantageous in developing 21st century abilities that will help the students to pursue their future careers as teachers and or, as other professions. Thank you very much for listening and good luck to, your, uh, to you all. Okay. Thank you very much for Mr. Talmun and team from Manda University, Mongolia, for a precious presentation. Now let us move to the last presentation, which will be delivered by Maria Nirmala Putri, Maria Agustin Putri Matilda, and Barley Bram from uh, Sanata Dharma University. Time is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity given to us. Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? And can you see our screen here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. OK. So uh, this is our research title. This is still an ongoing research, Deciding English Vocabulary Items for 8th graders to learn in EFL context. And our group presenters consists of me, Maria Nirmala, and then Bu Matilda, and also Pak Barli. To start the presentation, I will invite Pak Barli to share the background. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. I hope you can hear me. Quite clearly, there. Yeah. As Maria Putri has 
introduced the talk to, for our group. We are dealing with vocabulary, okay? Yeah. And certainly before that, we also kind of structure as previous uh, presenter, yeah? Talmud has a, have a kind of introduction, yeah? but by the conclusion, but now we will go to the background directly. As we can see there, uh, yeah, we have three subheadings, more or less, okay, under our background. As a, why we should talk about vocabulary learning yeah, in the context of actually elementary school, eh? uh, eighth grade. This is uh, the fifth, the fifth year, the fifth grade, more or less. Uh, not sure in Mongolia you have a similar system or totally different. Yeah, but by the way, uh, in our context. Uh, uh, Eight graders or no, no, eight graders, uh, junior high school actually. <laughs> no, no, yeah, eight, uh, eight, eight graders, uh, junior high school. The second year of junior high school. <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah. And then uh, we also look at the teachers, or in our context, actually, particular teacher, yeah, their teaching practice, and then a bit of the student context. So now go back to number one, why we should focus on vocabulary. As I think we all know that if we don't know vocabulary items, we will have yeah, nothing to say eh? or, or we will not uh, understand what others are saying to us or what we read. Therefore, yeah, we thought, yeah, um, Vocabulary items play a crucial role in learning a language and in our context, English. Therefore, yeah, we would conduct research okay, on that uh, particular topic, vocabulary learning, and we focus on a secondary school, okay, yeah, junior high school, or in Bahasa Indonesia, sekolah menengah pertama. We, we discovered that some of the vocabulary items seem to be beyond the students' levels, okay? Meaning some of the vocabulary items discussed or used in the textbooks or even used in the classroom were a bit too difficult above the students' needs, right? considering they are still in junior high school. And our context, we collected the data or observed the students, uh, a private school, okay? a Catholic private school located in kind of, yeah, not in the middle of the town or the city, but a uh, suburban town yeah, of central Java, in Java here. And we, we identified that the school applied our national curriculum. Yeah? And, and as we all know that the students certainly tended to use Bahasa Indonesia, right? their L1 in their daily school life so really they seldom practice speaking listening uh, automatically also writing and reading perhaps more a uh, bigger portion in their daily uh, school life i think that's all regarding the background of our research okay i will turn over to my co-presenters eh? Maria Agustin, also Maria Putri Matilda. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Barli. And we proceed to the next part. Okay. Yeah. So this become our rationale of the study. We believe that the selected vocabulary must consider the student's level and from the CEFR 
right, that we employ in uh, becoming the vocabulary level checker in this research. For the eighth graders or SMB students, uh, grade two, still the second year of their junior high school, the most suitable vocabulary level for them is A1 and A2. Uh, we don't say or we don't want to limit or judge that the students cannot expand their vocabulary into the higher level. Like uh, we don't say that we we will not uh, make them a counter the vocabulary in B2, B1, B2, or even C1 and C2 levels. But in the context of uh, facilitating the students with uh, textbook, workbook, and the list of vocabulary, uh, given the suitable level, will maybe in line also with what uh, Professor Preston has mentioned yesterday. So we provide the I plus one. So it seems possible and it's, it's not, or it limits the possibility to make the student being frustrated because uh, in classroom context, the vocabulary learned by the students are the vocabulary that will come later maybe in quizzes and also in tests. So here we, uh, we believe that actually the, the level, the suitable level will uh, boost their confidence so they can have many vocabulary in terms of numbers but with suitable level uh, as they will as they will uh, learn more later in their higher level gradually. So of course they will uh, exposed and, and they will encounter uh, more level, I mean higher level with more numbers of vocabulary that will also suitable for their English learning. This is in EFL context. Now we will, okay, yeah. this is the research objective. By doing this research, we will investigate the selected vocabulary items for eighth graders to learn. As our co-presenter has mentioned before, Barley has mentioned that uh, we focus on some vocabulary, especially verbs. The list consists of 55 verbs. Why? Because uh, we limit that as the, what is it? We, we just take that part to uh, become our main of the research because it's a small case in uh, learning. Uh, they, they use recount text as the uh, learning materials. And of course, yes, the, the further researchers is later expected to uh, expand the number of vocabulary and also the part of speech of the words itself is not limited only for verbs, but uh, to give you clear context, we only use that list of vocabulary, 55 words. And these are the literature review. We mostly uh, refer to whole nations that state specific number of words should be mastered by EFL learners as their learning goal, however, should be in suitable level of mastery, as I already uh, mentioned before in the rational that the suitable level uh, will be the best or will facilitate uh, learning in classroom context. And this is our related studies reference. The first one, oh, the two studies here done in 2020 still currently done. And the first one, vocabulary levels of English textbook for Indonesian senior high school grade 10. More or less, we do quite the same. However, we focus on the SMP grade two or eighth graders. And this research is uh, investigating the textbook uh, in senior high school context. And they use the textbook written by the government prepared by the government, still in curriculum Tikables, and they focus on the first five chapters only for that research. And the other one is done by Towns in 2020. The title is, which word list should I teach? Using word list to support textbook vocabulary instructions. Uh, Towns uh, focuses more on the consideration to choose what kind of word list 
to teach to the students depending also on the context and of course level of the students will also be the main consideration okay we move to the methodology this one uh, this part will be talking about our method this is a content or document analysis and uh, the type is qualitative descriptive the data collection here as i mentioned before uh, it's a vocabulary list vocabulary list consists of 55 words from a thesis finding the thesis finding uh, conducted in that <clears throat> what is it in uh, like with we with when we review the context of the students early in this presentation so uh, the list of vocabulary done by the teacher there and we only focus on the recount text and we narrow down again on the verbs used in that recount text and we use these two elements the uh, sorry these two instruments as the vocabulary level checker the first one is online Cambridge Dictionary and also CEFR guide, Common European Framework Reference Guide. And in online Cambridge Dictionary, we can find when we type and want to look up some verbs, or uh, sorry, words, we will see the label, whether it belongs to A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, or C2, or we can, we also discover that some of the words belong to like not, not defined yet, so uh, it's not clear whether it belongs to label A or label B or C. Briefly, we will share, this is the CEFR guide. There we go from A1, from the basic, for basic user to C2 as the proficient user of the foreign language. Yes, and, Claire. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And yeah. For level eight, I mean, grade eight of uh, our SMB grade two, they will mostly uh, exposed to A1 and to level of the uh, level, uh, sorry, of the vocabulary. And yeah, the CFR itself have already detailed actually the predictors or why or in what level, uh, students should know and how many and how big number of the vocabulary they have mastered. So depending on that uh, standard, so we try to identify whether the 55 vocabulary list already suitable or no. So we later on will present the ongoing data on uh, sorry ongoing finding for how many uh, how many words belong to A1 and so on. And for that finding, I will invite Bu Matilda to present. So, okay, thank you, uh, Bu uh, Maria for the time given. So now uh, I would like to share about our fi uh, findings, but actually this is uh, our finding is still ongoing because we know that the, this research is still ongoing too. So this is not the uh, a fixed finding. So, okay. uh, well, as you can see here, uh, there's a church or us uh, provide several words and lies. So here you can say that, uh, you know, as a adult learner or English teacher, these words, it seems very uh, familiar with us. And then we also provide here five words with A1 level. And next, we have also uh, several words with the A level here, A1 and A2. But, uh, but uh, we found that there is a word used in the recount text. Uh, it's iron. Iron, uh, surprisingly, is for uh, uh, it belongs to the B1 level. Next. We have fry, grab, imply. Uh, actually, this is already, you know, like it makes us surprised because imply um, is- Sorry to interrupt. Um, the time is up. Maybe you can just oh, uh, yeah. start the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, we can see that imply is often uh, appear in the 
tests and several uh, texts, but it's belong to P2. So, so we have A1 for 18 words, A2 12 words, B1 13, year, uh, 13 words, P2 5 words, C1 no words, C2 2 words, and not define 5 words. The findings reveal that 54% 40, of the verbs belong to A1 and A2 levels, while the other 46% nah, range from B1 to C2. Then we cannot uh, give you the conclusion because it's still ongoing, but later we will suggest uh, a word re replacement for the B1, B2, C2, uh, with with the words in A2 and A2 level. I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you for uh, Maria Nirmala Putri, Maria Agustin, and Mr. Barley for the presentation. And also thank you very much for all the uh, insightful presentations. Now we are entering the Q&A sessions for all the present presenters. So please raise your hand by clicking the reaction, then mention your name, affiliation, and to whom the question is addressed and what the question is. Thank you. Okay, so we have one question here from Subiasi from SMAN Satu Ngagli. So good morning. Related to vocabulary, really I would like to help I would like you to help me give knowledge or experience how to teach and what approach to teach a vocabulary which is interesting and effective for my SMA students whom I know still poor in mastering vocabulary. Thank you so much. I think it's for Miss Maria Car Carmelia Mr. Barley. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question, Bu Sumiasi. I think you are what, addressing the questions to our group, thing, eh? although other presenters can jump into it yeah, to share what we should do regarding vocabulary. Probably Maria or Matilda would. Uh, Say something too, based on your experiences. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Ibu Sumiasi. Uh, okay, we start. We will try to uh, answer your questions about the approach of teaching and question about how to engage the student in vocabulary learning, more or less like that. Okay, for the approach, as long as we can share, we, we can say that the approach can vary. It's really dependable on the student's uh, characteristic. And referring to the presenter from Mongolia, Mr. Telmun and uh, the other and the team, then VAK can be also the consideration on which approach you will use to uh, teach vocabulary to your students. However, when we refer to our research that we concern on the level, the teacher should really consider and maybe check first whether the vocabulary used in your vocabulary learning suitable with that level. Let me give one example. Say you will choose one text. In our case, it's recount text. Uh, to have recount text with the same story, let's say we have, um, uh, what is it, the story of our holiday, for example. Uh, it can be very what kind of holiday you have and what kind of vocabulary is wrote from elementary school until, uh, what is it, senior high school, we can have the same type of recount text talking about holiday. However, for the vocab, please make sure that the vocab used there, either it's verbs and then noun and other part of switch uh, of the uh, vocabulary is suitable with the student's level. When it's uh, grade 10, so you find the vocab in grade 10. When it's grade 11, you make sure that it shoots to your student's level. That's what we can share. 
maybe others can also uh, give their opinions. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, could I add a bit? Everyone? Yes, sure. Pak yeah. can also another, add. Yeah. Another strategy, I think whole nation uh, has introduced this uh, some time ago. How about what we call word family? Like Bu Sumasi, maybe at your SMR, you can write the word go on the whiteboard or blackboard. Go. Go is a, kind of the basic. It has a lot of members, eh? family members. Then from go, we have when, past tense, eh? uh, gone, book three, also goes, eh? the ES, uh, the present tense, or going, the informing, eh? or goer, the person who uh, goes somewhere is a goer, eh? goer. I think that's all. From go, we can yeah have uh, five or six uh, with family members there. That kind of can be fun too. If you haven't tried, maybe uh, you can think about that with Sumiasi, some word family. Thank you. That's what I can add for the time being. Okay, thank you for the answer. And is there any other questions? If yes, please raise your hand by clicking the reactions. Is there any questions? Mm -hmm. Bipak Barley, can you, okay. maybe you have yeah. some questions? Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you for the opportunity, Pak Karel. I would like to ask uh, the presenters from Mongolia. So you, I think, focus on four Cs, yeah? Courses. Mm -hmm. Do you have any priority? Priority. Which one is more important from the four C's? Of the first C or the second C, or all of them are equally important? Thank you. Well, uh, generally, all four of mm. them are equally important, mm. especially in the twenty-first century. All the mm. employers want the labor force to uh, have mm. the four C skills, all of them equally important. Mm. But in our our study, we tried to keep them equally important, but the results showed that the critical thinking of our students was the weakest skill among the oh, four. So from our point of view, from our study results, we determined that we must uh, try to improve the critical thinking of our students better than the other skills. Mm -hmm. So right now, I believe we should focus on that. Mm. Is it a C3 or a C, C2? The second C, critical thinking? Um, I don't well, think there is a, matter. <laughs> it does, I, I don't think there's a relevance to the number of importance, oh, number of orders. Oh, yeah. You mentioned critical thinking, right? This uh, right. which C is that the second C or, or the first C? If he, oh the the order is free. I thought the last the four the four C is communication, right? Oh. Um, I think critical thinking is the third C. The third C, okay, yeah. yeah. The first is maybe communicative aspect, probably, yeah? Yeah, yeah that's If right. this is the case, similar to our situation, I think more or less, yeah? in Indonesia, I think, yeah. Critical okay. thinking is, we should work hard. Even yeah. we ourselves, yeah, Our lecturers, teachers, yeah, should be more critical too, in a positive sense, I think, yeah. Yeah, thank That's you. Right. Uh, 
Thank you. Hey, Moon. You call you Tell Moon, yeah? For That's right. Yes. Your sharing it. Okay. Thank you for the answer, Mr. Tell Moon. Is there any other questions from the participants? If yes, please uh, raise your hand by clicking the reactions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. If you still a, a few minutes, eh? uh, how about Bu Reli? Is still online, Bu Reli? Yeah, I'm still uh, in the room. Oh, yeah, fantastic, Bu Reli. Could you okay. share a bit more, Bu Reli, about MBKM? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, is it, was it very difficult or easy to implement actually in your context? Okay, uh, for the first year in uh, 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 in the first year, I think it's difficult for all uh, oh, study program in University of Jambi because we have to uh, do, we have to adapt and we have to mm. revise the curriculum. And uh, we have uh, technical problems uh, related with the with the how the students uh, contract the courses. But uh, mm. uh, started from two thousand and twenty one, we have developed siakat uh, siakadeka. Jadi, uh, mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, uh, so. Uh, it enables uh, the students who do the uh, student student exchange, and uh, they will they will have uh, it will it it has been easier for them to contract the courses mm -hmm. and uh, and also related with their grades. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe okay. is there any specific uh, you wanna ask about the specific program? because I cannot cover, because I cannot talk uh, all seven uh, programs mm -hmm. that we have uh, implemented so far. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's really, uh, all right. So in general, when new, the first year, more difficult, yeah? But now yeah. we have some rules, steps, uh, guidance, uh, guidelines, and then now easier. Yeah. 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 Um, thank you. I think. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You want to add some more? Feel free. Uh, yeah. Is it okay to ask question again? Oh. Um. Sorry. Uh. The time is up. So. Oh. All right. So I will contact Bu Reli later on. My name is yeah. Dari Pranoto. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the insightful presentation and discussion. Now we have finished our parallel session. So after this, please kindly leave this breakout room and return to the main room for the plenary, plenary, plenary session. Thank you very much for the fruitful discussion and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Karel. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Bye bye.
which a guest star will be invited. English Club also provides information in various English competitions and webinars. iDiamond is a vessel to gather PBE students' aspirations and serves to connect PBE students and lecturers. iDiamond always makes wall magazines which provide the latest information on PBE events such as graduation night. PBE Choir is a student activity unit for PBE students who like to sing. PBE Choir always participates in competitions and perform in internal PBE events such as Graduation Night, the International Language and Language Teaching Conference, and Undergraduate Conference. There's a notification on your phone. Oh, you're right. L L T C. What L L T C? Are you kidding me? You don't know what L L T C is? I mean, I've heard about it, but let's ask the right person. 